Now, here's your host, Tom Dorado. Hello again, everyone, and welcome to the Bob Simmons Show. Yesterday afternoon at Lewis Field, the Cowboys rolled over southwestern Louisiana, and Bob, it was good to see the youngsters come out, relax, enjoy themselves, and have fun again. That's right, Tom. It was a, a fun victory for us. <clears throat> we had a lot of young men, that, young men that came out and played. Our offense and defense executed well, and I, probably the most important part, a lot of players that have not played got a chance to play. And everybody seemed to contribute. Didn't everybody they? seemed to contribute. We're going to have all the highlights <clears throat> after this opening. Time out. Welcome back to the show. Bob, certainly was great to be home again. No question about that. A place now where we've won seven of the last 10, 12 of the last 17, and three or four this year. Well, I tell you, the time was good to be home, and uh, I thought we had a great crowd uh, on both sides of the uh, the field. And, uh, you know, what, we, what I wanted to do was uh, our players come out and, and execute well, and uh, we, we won the toss. We elected to take the ball uh, on offense. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a good job by Willie Grissom. I thought he'd get more out here, but he got the ball to the 19. Uh, yard line and you know, this is our first series we come out with an option play uh, as you can see Tony gains about eight or nine yards on that drive and we come back uh, with the same play because it worked the first time and the gains about eight or nine that's on, good on coaching that. yeah it right is there. <laughs> uh, uh, we come back run his own play this is a nice run by Nathan great cut uh, he gets outside for about 21 uh, I think that's 38 yards mm -hmm. but our offense is coming off the ball we're gelling uh, we're doing things that work and this is a great cut by Nathan uh, where he ends up running 21 yards for a touchdown. And that's the kind of drive you really want to come out and do. So it's great execution up front, uh, nice running by your tailback, and it's good to see the offensive line come out and move a ball against a, a defense which we thought we were better than going into the ball game. Standing on the sideline, as you see Sidness hit the extra point, you have to feel pretty good knowing that you've moved it outside, you've moved it inside. This might be a good day, huh? Well, uh, you know, I very, felt very confident that uh, that our offense could move the football, and, and now our defense comes on the field, and that's Waddle, he, who probably had an exceptional ball game. This is one of their better receivers. Stokely, for them, uh, is an excellent receiver. He's got over 51 catches. We have to keep contained here, but, but our defense is doing a good job hustling to the ball. That's a, that's a great job, but I think it's, it's Evan Howe of knocking the ball down, but he was across the line of scrimmage, which is a loss and down, so uh, we forced a, a, a three and out situation, and we went in talking about third down conversions, uh, and making sure we got ourselves off the field. That's a good execution by uh, Terrence Richardson. Uh, this, we come back out, we, we game plan this as a, a swing play that Nathan, they picks up about 25 yards. And again, that's our offense. This is third nine. Third nine is a play where we talked about third down conversions. We see we go to inside to Marcellus. We converse that to uh, the first down. Then we run to an option play with Tony. Uh, he gets a face mask coming in here, but he picks up about uh, 15 yards. So we feel pretty good at this point that we can uh, really almost do what we want in terms of running the football. And uh, I know that our offensive line is a big part of that, but uh, Tony had an exceptional day. Our tailback had an exceptional day. Uh, this ball puts us down, I think, uh, half the distance. Mm -hmm. So we go third and five. Uh, you know, we come back inside and, and uh, you know, we felt that, you know, Marcellus normally make that, makes that catch. Uh, it's a good play on their part. Uh, probably should have coached him a little bit different, had him set down in that zone. Uh, but we come out with points on the board uh, after that second drive and, and uh, you know, again, turn the ball over to our defense who uh, I thought really had control of the ball game. I thought we were a dominant up front uh, against what they were doing. Uh, they're going three-step. This is a, a better play by, uh, by Howell in our secondary, not going for the out and up and being in great position because we talked about being in position. And this is a third and long down where we, we, we missed one tackle. But you see a defense, three and four guys around the ball. That's what you want to get from your defense. Uh, we force a punt. Uh, T. Richardson had an excellent day. I thought averaging 19 yards on the return. And uh, I think he gets about 12 there. But later on in the ball game, you he breaks a, a long one. Ones, yeah. We go back to running the option. This is a great decision by Tony. And what I like about this play uh, is that not only Tony executed and ran for about 56 yards, but, you know, on the other copy, you see your defensive lineman. Everybody is sprinting down the field. Mm -hmm. And then we go back inside to Jay Files. And I thought he was going to break this for a touchdown. Hung on to the ball. Got it down to about the two-yard line here. But it's good domination up front with your offensive line. Levine is playing well, filling in for Adam Davis. Our tackle, uh, Camacho, those guys are really controlling up front. And, and you see here, 
Uh, Jay almost get it in for a touchdown. Uh, we're down on the one yard line. We come back uh, with a basic option play. There's nobody on the pitch, but Tony does a nice job because we've got movement up front of uh, taking that ball down to the score. And I, I think that's uh, three series, three touchdowns, mm -hmm. or some form of getting points. Uh, now we're up 17 to nothing. And, and uh, it, you, know, our, all, you know, we feel good about what's going on. Now it's just a matter of not getting laps. We come back in after a couple of stands. You know, this is a, a ball where, uh, you know, Tony's trying to force it over a guy. Uh, it's a great play on the defense. He made a part, great You know, play. knock it down and catch yeah. it. Uh, but uh, we looked at that on film and uh, probably need to do some different things in terms of running our routes. Uh, but that's what Tony's got to get better in terms of making good decisions here. Uh, they're going on a three-step drive here. Uh, I think uh, that Stokes, he drops the ball and uh, we sort of lose contain. But Waddle comes around on a stunt, makes an exceptional play. That's two of his uh, probably four sacks that he has made. And, uh, you know, here's a senior mm -hmm. uh, that's really playing hard and want to go out a winner and is really doing a good job. And our defense is rallying around here. Uh, beat th three and out again, force a punt uh, to uh, T. Richardson. Uh, you know, he does, you know, he, he normally fair catches that, but he's getting aggressive, which I like. He gets back out to the wall and he picks up another 15 yards, which gives us great field position. We come back with the option. Tony does a nice job of sticking it and coming out the other end uh, for about 15 to, uh, to uh, 20 yards. And uh, now we go back in. This is a third down play where he makes a good decision. He's getting positive yardage. Uh, we get a personal foul, which uh, takes us down to the uh, I think Bob probably down to the, to the uh, three yard line. Mm -hmm. Go inside to Nathan up top, good movement. Uh, and then it's the fourth time we had the ball and the fourth time we come out with some form of points. You know, you mentioned that with Tony and I remember a couple of conversations we had last year that you were saying when he get matures, he gets stronger, he's going to run through some of those tackles. Well, he he did that yesterday. He is. You know, as he gets with Dan and get into that waste program, he'll get a lot stronger. And uh, this is one of uh, uh, Ethan Evans Howell's interceptions. did a nice job of uh, picking that ball off. Good pressure. We go inside to uh, with our slide play to, uh, I think it's Willie Grissom. Yep. Picks up about seven or eight yards. We come back inside with with uh, Jay Fobbs. That wasn't blocked very well. They had more men over there uh, than, uh, than we had. And here we have a breakdown in, in pass protection. The first time that uh, their offensive line didn't block that good, but this is a great job on special teams. You couldn't throw uh, it down could, there any perfect. throw it down there any perfect than that. Uh, uh, Swetman did a nice job of kicking the ball. Third and seven, we got to get ourselves off the field here. Uh, this is late in the half. Uh, that's, uh, who is that? Marcus that's Marcus. Play. Marcus makes How do you a play? nice play. We, we thought he played well. You know, Marcus uh, is getting better every ball game, but uh, he makes a break on this ball here. He stays up, he may score, but he lays out uh, and gets the ball in, and it's about getting turnover, getting the ball back for us. And I really thought that we would come out with seven points here. Uh, we go to our swing ball to Jay, to Jay Fobbs, and they come off the block. But we pick up about uh, seven or eight yards. Uh, Tony stumbles coming out uh, and then uh, really tries to make something happen. Uh, he gets the ball down in, in, in relatively good position for a field goal. And I thought Titness, Sitness uh, did a good job of, of going on and really kicking the ball solid. So we go on at halftime <clears throat> with a pretty comfortable lead, 27-6. Uh, uh, we've stopped ourselves a couple times. It's just about going in, talking about the things that we can do better <clears throat> on both sides of the ball with, with, with this ball club. Maintaining <clears throat> intensity, concentration, basically the message at halftime? Right. Yeah, you know, we felt that we had the game under control, that we could not come out and have a mental lap mm -hmm. and let them get back in the ball game. And uh, I thought when we came out in, in the second half, it was important that our defense, since we uh, 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 ran the ball or the, took the ball on the kickoff the first half. Our defense come back and remain dominant and uh, forced a three it out. And I thought they did that. They came out and, and uh, guys are in the right places. We're running good with coverages here. Uh, I think this may be a second or third down where they try to run a draw play. Mm -hmm. and, and our kids up front are very active, <clears throat> which, which is exactly what you want your defense to be. They, they run certain plays. We're controlling the line of scrimmage. We've got more people around the ball than they do. Uh, and we, we force uh, them back into another punting situation uh, where we felt pretty good about our chances of trying to return one. And, and uh, this is a play where everybody has to block. Now, we need to do a good job of blocking up front uh, on that particular play. But we get the ball back, and, and uh, Tony makes an excellent run down the sideline and thought he was going to score. But uh, that's, that's one of his, uh, uh, I think that was about, what, 38, mm -hmm. 38 yards? He had 158 yards. We go back inside, running the, uh, our zone play. Uh, Nathan makes something out of nothing here. We run the option here. Good pitch. 
uh, tries to get back and get inside for a couple yards, didn't get stopped. And uh, again, we've been running that play all day, and, and what we, and they finally got smart. And what we got to do as a quarterback is try to really look that off, and then go to our third option, which really, which really was our curl play. Uh, and that's where Tony's got to learn <clears throat> when guys fall off. Uh, but we come out with points, and that's the most important thing. We're 30 to six. Our defense gets back on the field. The Howell <coughs> Show starts right here. I'll do the nice job, I tell you, <coughs> uh, because uh, initially that play, uh, he was beat. Mm -hmm. He used his speed, got back in on the play, made a play, got the ball back for us uh, on on offense. We decided to go up top ourselves because of the run, uh, and as you can see. Uh, if you can catch it, you can score uh, because that was an easy play. <laughs> yeah, he was wide open on that play. We're seeing a lot of offense, but I want to go back to the defensive domination uh, in the game. They averaged uh, only about 1.5, 1.6 yards a snap before you started substituting. That's domination. Well, that's domination. I think for, for, uh, for three quarters, our defense uh, did a good job of controlling the line of scrimmage. And, and it goes to show you when, when we get a lot of guys in, those guys got to maintain that intensity. Mm -hmm. But as you can see here, uh, you know, we still got three or four guys around the tackle. And this is prior to the third quarter. Uh, and they, they go to play action. And it's just like anything. we got to get a guy out containing. Uh, but uh, they, they force a, uh, a bad throw. Again, we force him into a punting situation. And I just thought that we were one or two blocks from really trying to break this thing. Nice job by, by uh, T. Richardson making the first guy miss, getting back to the wall. And here, I think it's about 25 to 30 yard return, but he gives a good field position all day. And that's, you know, for the most part, our special team was pretty solid uh, all day, but he, he got up the sideline and, and he used to keep that ball in the other hand. Uh, but <clears throat> that gave us great field position. Uh, we started off on about the 35 here. Uh, pitches to Nathan, and I think this is about a uh, 38-yard run, and, and uh, uh, that takes the ball down to about the 25-yard line. So, again, our offense comes back. There's a lot of consistency there. We go back inside with, I think, Kevin Brown and pounding a little bit for about five. Then we catch, we quick snap him, uh, go on a sweep. Uh, this is a good in and out cut by Nathan here, gets to the end zone. Uh, that makes it uh, 44, but the blocking, if you see Kevin Brown do a good job of blocking up front here, uh, the receivers, Sean Love downfield is blocking, and, uh, uh, you know, that's the way you want to do it every time. You know, I think 80% <coughs> of the yardage came out on the edge in some form or fashion, and you just basically made a living there. Again, uh, the Cowboys dominated. You see uh, going over to talk to Nelson Stokely as the game yeah. is over. I think good man, Nelson Stokely, and, uh, you know, he said we had a good football team, and, uh, you know, I like the effort of our squad that day. We've been playing hard the whole season, and it's paid off. Uh, and so that was, a, that was a fun ball game for us, uh, and we just went in the locker room and celebrated. Well, the excitement continues to build here at OSU. We'll explain on this week's Two Minute Drill. What? The Two Minute Drill, brought to you by Tartan Golf and Gear. If it has your logo on it, we do it. You know what was just once a dream will soon become a reality. And for those of us who have been around here for a while, it is indeed truly an exciting time to be a cowboy. No one knows more than I do the importance that Gallagher Iba has played in the history of Oklahoma State University. It is where cowboy basketball had its beginning with Mr. Iba and what a great building it's been for wrestling and basketball through the years. Gallagher Ibe Arena, no question about it, is a very, very special place to me. Before I ever arrived at Stillwater, Oklahoma, I was very aware of the role that Gallagher Ibe Arena played in the tradition of basketball through the years, and that's something that's still very dear to my heart. Well, we're, we're very excited about the groundbreaking event, which will happen on January the 12th. It's, it's going to be a wonderful time for us to showcase what we consider the, uh, the facility that has touched more lives in the past 60 years than any other facility in the state of Oklahoma. Uh, it has fond memories for all of us that have ever stepped into that facility and, and has, has shown, uh, has been a point of pride for not only the athletic department but this university and uh, the city of Stillwater and uh, we're able to take this facility and expand upon it and, and build it to uh, a bigger and better uh, facility. It's obviously more than just an arena. 
Uh, it is a, more than an arena, it is a facility that will include uh, many things for student athletes, uh, for all programs. It will include our academic support center, it will include uh, the strength and conditioning facility, new athletic training area, new locker rooms, new offices for our coaches and athletic staff. And it will also be a facility that uh, will be beneficial to our fans and, and our supporters as we expand in the arena and nearly double its capacity. Now we have an opportunity to give some of those amenities to our fans by increasing the size of the seats, bigger aisles, more restrooms, more uh, concessions and novelty areas, and easier access to elevators and escalators and uh, we're asking individuals to step forward now if they have interest in ever being a season ticket holder, holder because now is the first time in over a decade they have the opportunity to be a season ticket holder for men's basketball and uh, the sales are going great. We have less than 2,000 tickets that are currently available so uh, we're very excited about that and, and uh, people don't need to be uh, placed on the waiting list uh, if they wait too long so the time is now. Dean, obviously this was once just a plan, then it was just once a piece of paper. Now we're on the brink of it being a reality. It is just around the corner and the impact that it's going to have upon the athletic program and the university is, is immeasurable. Our coaches now have something tangible that when they go into the homes of our student athletes, they can show them the progress that is being made and, and indicate to them that not only will they have the opportunity to possibly play in this facility, but uh, be able to have the opportunity to utilize all the things that will be a part of this facility. It allows us to move to the next level as far as facility. It, uh, uh, it, we have opportunity to have a facility that is comparable to the, the competition or the outstanding programs that we have and we will continue, uh, it allows us to continue to compete as one of the top programs in the Big 12. You know, Tom, this overall facility the campaign, the 45 million campaign, really speaks to the future of Oklahoma State and, and uh, what we want to be about and the direction that we want to go. And uh, I think it's a great time for it. Uh, so as I said before, the future is bright here at Oklahoma State. The game within the game and our Ask Bob Simmons segment. They're both straight ahead. Don't go away. We're back and it's time to look at the game within the game. You're going to like these numbers this week. I know you will as they come up on your screen. Here we go. Yeah, 440 yards <laughs> rushing, 605 total, 240 yards allowed by the defense, four turnovers and five punt returns. Uh, I think it speaks for itself. I was going to say, coaches like those. You're not going to lose <laughs> too do. many ball games. If when we can you have put numbers ones. up like that every ball game, we'll probably be the national <laughs> championship. <laughs> this week's question from OakState.com and it's asked Coach Bob Simmons, presented by Southwestern Bell. It has to do with the review process for coaches' questions about calls made during the game. Yeah, we have a form that uh, we fill out every week. Uh, myself and uh, Tommy Kaiser, we work with, with uh, Tim Millis. And so calls that we question, we send in and get a response from him. And he does review them and send yeah, he, some kind he of goes answer over back them and, to you. And uh, he, he'll, he, he'll agree or disagree. <laughs> That's about all he can do, That's I guess. Right. And if you have a question for Bob Simmons that you want answered on the show, log on to Oklahoma State's official athletic website at oakstate.com and participate in the Southwestern Bell Ask Coach Bob Simmons contest. A little update now on Jamal Fobbs. Well, he has a, a spring time, and it's going to be a day-by-day -day, uh, process in talking to the, uh, the, uh, the trainer. Uh, there's been no swelling, so we'll find out uh, on Monday how far he's come. Some housekeeping we need to catch up on right now. The football banquet's not that far away. Yeah, I tell you, our banquet is normally the second weekend in December. December 11th is when we have it. It's a banquet to really honor our seniors, and we want as many fans to turn out as possible. Now, Baylor, to wrap up the regular season at home Saturday, got to have that. That's part of this finishing right. strong in the home stretch. Well, it is, and, and it's not going to be easy. Uh, Baylor, in my opinion, has got uh, excellent talent. Uh, they lost last week uh, to OU, but they're going to come in here and they're going to want to do the same thing that we want to do, finish up with a win. And we, we uh, have to make sure that we do finish up with the win. So we want to have uh, a lot of fans out for that ballgame. And the seniors leave. It's a great yeah. way, a tribute to them. Well, it is. Go ahead, Tom. 
Well, I was gonna say. Well, no, I was gonna let you finish it. But now, what I was gonna say is, it's good to have the fans to, to honor the seniors. We got 14 of our seniors that'll be there. Uh, these guys have been through thick and thin, and and has really done a good job for the program. Uh, and so, as I said before, as many fans can come out and support them, they would really like uh, to go out on a, on a big note. They have left their mark on this program. They no have. question about right. that. That's all the time we have for this week's show. We're going to greet you in two weeks. We won't be back next week, but in two weeks, we'll wrap up this season and look ahead to 1999. For Bob Simmons, our entire crew here at Educational Television Services, Tom Dorado. Goodbye, everybody.